Here's why the Milwaukee Bucks will win the 2021 championship. Despite Kyrie Irving going down and James Harden not being healthy, the Bucks handled their business against the Brooklyn Nets. The Giannis Middleton pairing continues to prove itself as the most dynamic one two punch in all of basketball right now, and Milwaukee has the best defensive rating of any playoff team by far. You're about to see every reason for why I think it's the Bucks' year, and stay tuned to see how the Bucks match up with the Hawks in the East Finals. Only 21.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're looking for consistent NBA hot takes, then you're in the right place. The Phoenix Suns are looking extremely dangerous with Devin Booker having just dropped a 40-point triple-double and Chris Paul returning to the lineup shortly, but even without CP3, the Suns' offense looks unstoppable. They haven't gotten past the Clippers yet, but... Phoenix is the team that best matches up with the Bucks. Having said that, here's why I think the Bucks should be considered just as, if not more dangerous than the Suns. There's three players on the Bucks who can create offense for themselves at an all-star level. Drew Holiday's been an absolute godsend for the Bucks, as in years past, the Bucks had to rely on Eric Bloodsoe to be the main playmaker in pick and roll scenarios. Before he completed the puzzle in Milwaukee, Everyone forgets that back in 2017, Holiday averaged 24 points per game while leading New Orleans into the second round of the playoffs. Now, I know Drew mightily struggled from the field in the seven-game battle versus the Nets. However, his shot creation off the dribble alone, whether he was converting buckets himself or not, was enough to ease the pressure off maybe the league's most dominant duo right now in Giannis the Greek Freak Adetokounmpo and Chris Cash Money Middleton, Cash with a KH by the way. If you're not convinced that the pairing's right up there with the best one-two punches in basketball, here's a stat that might get you thinking that way. Middleton and Adetokounmpo recently joined Kobe and Shaq as one of two duos in league history to record 30 plus points and 10 plus rebounds in the same game twice in a single postseason. Cash can dice up defenders on the perimeter with crafty hesitation dribbles and a smooth jumper, while the Greek freak overpowers his defenders with his once-in-a-lifetime slashing ability. We'll start with the Bucks' second option, but their first option in terms of creating and knocking down perimeter jumpers in Middleton. Chris stunned the aggressive and blisteringly loud Brooklyn faithful by dropping 23 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, and get this, 5 steals in Game 7. The man's an underrated defender. More on that Milwaukee defense later on. But the most impressive part about Middleton's Game 7 was this stone-cold dagger with the game in the balance down the stretch in overtime. 45 seconds left in overtime. 10 on the shot clock. Middleton spinning and hits. Big bucket for Chris Middleton. Moving on to Giannis, and he may take 34 seconds at the charity stripe, which has been one of the stories of the playoffs, but he's going to force you to send him there as the man's constantly putting pressure on the defense. But the scary part is, Adetokounmpo's getting more and more confident with his shot from 10 feet all the way to the three-point line. If he's hitting his deep-range shots consistently, there's literally nothing defenses can do about it, and you can tell that puts fear into his opponents. That was something perfectly exemplified in the Bucks vs. Nets all-time great showdown, and even though Giannis didn't outplay KD, I love the respect he was giving him all throughout the series. Even after the Bucks dropped a heartbreaking Game 5 on the road, blowing a 17-point second-half lead, and falling victim to a legendary 49-point triple-double from Easy Money Sniper, Giannis swallowed his pride and called KD the best player on the planet. Graceful in defeat, but Adetokounmpo was also graceful after he matched the 48 points Durant had in Game 7 with 40 points of his own. Giannis became the fifth player in NBA postseason history with 40-plus points and 10-plus rebounds in a Game 7, joining Tim Duncan, Charles Barkley, Jerry West, and Elgin Baylor. But he wasn't rubbing those stats in anyone's face. 
as here's what he had to say after the Bucks' hard-fought and emotional win to advance to the East Finals. I, you know, I said a couple of days ago, he's the best player in the world. He's still the best player in the world. And uh, we know coming into this series that we have to do it as a team. Kevin Durant definitely proved people wrong who said he couldn't carry a team by himself. And I agree with Giannis. KD's the best player in the world right now. The man's damn cold. That turnaround shot with one second left to force overtime, directly in the grill of one of the best perimeter defenders in basketball in P.J. Tucker, was absolutely deadly, and the degree of difficulty was off the charts. Tucker spoke on that shot post-game, saying, quote, I actually just laughed after he made it because it was incredible. I actually appreciated it being a fan of the game. You see somebody make that kind of shot, you gotta appreciate it, even though it's on you. But Giannis played pretty damn good himself. For this series, the Greek Freak averaged 32 points, 13 rebounds, 4 assists, and a block per game while shooting 58% from the floor. If you're going to obsess about the deep range mastery of Kevin Durant, you should pay that same respect to the beastly attacks to the rim from Giannis Adetokounmpo. His Shaq-like ability to bully defenders out of the way using his overpowering upper body strength and brute force allows him to take over games at will and individually. But to win a championship, you need at least 8 to 10 guys you can count on to get crucial buckets. The most important role player in these playoffs has been Brooke Lopez, who, after getting roasted by Durant in the pick and roll during Game 5, made some crucial defensive rotations in Game 7. As I mentioned a minute ago, P.J. Tucker's the most elite one-on-one -on -one defender in basketball, and now that he's got his reps attempting to lock down the lethalness of Durant, whoever he matches up with next is going to be a walk in the park compared to that. There was, of course, a ton of media attention going to the Nets not having a healthy Harden or Kyrie, and rightfully so, but very few people brought up the Bucks not having a man who started 66 games for them in Dante DiVincenzo. After going down 0-2, Milwaukee took 4 out of 5 against the Vegas favorites to win the NBA title, and for their fans, it's not as sweet as if Kyrie would have been on the floor and Harden would have been at full strength, but at the same time, we have to give the Bucks organization and fan base a lot of credit for this. To overwrite what Milwaukee achieved just because their opponent's best players were out would be silly. Middleton and Holiday struggled for the majority of Game 7 in a hostile environment, but they turned it on when it mattered most and sealed the W for them. It's the shot creation of those two combined with Giannis's improved passing, that makes the Bucks' three-headed monster a force to be reckoned with. Milwaukee's slayed their biggest dragon, and in many ways, knocking off the hyped-up Brooklyn Nets could be just as gratifying as winning the Larry O'Brien trophy. They bounced back from faltering a 17-point lead in Game 5. They had to deal with two 48-plus point barrages from the greatest player on Earth, but they stayed the course and took care of what was in front of them. In their matchup with the Atlanta Hawks, the main priority will be staying in front of and slowing down Trey Young, but that isn't the only challenge the Bucks will have to deal with. Kevin Herter's also proving to be an elite shot creator. He's going to be tough to stop. Herter was the star of Game 7 against the Sixers, as he can sauce up defenders on the perimeter and get to the mid-range with ease. Additionally, Bogdan Bogdanovich and Danilo Gallinari give the Hawks a ton of floor spacing and make Atlanta a tough challenge to deal with on the perimeter. This Hawks team has a ton of heart as they made a comeback from down 18 points in Game 4 and followed that up with a 26-point comeback in Game 5. But while the Sixers take their foot off the gas pedal when they get up big, this Bucks team doesn't mess around like that. Coach Mike Budenholzer will have them prepared for the never-die mentality of the Hawks, but the Bucks' league-best defense is the main reason for why I think they win this series and ultimately the franchise's first title since 1971. Milwaukee's 102.8 defensive rating gives them a 3.7-point gap between the second-ranked Phoenix Suns. That's the same gap separating the second-ranked Suns and the number seven ranked New York Knicks. 
Both Giannis and Drew Holiday were named to the all-defensive first team, but you could argue that the entire Bucks roster is all-defensive material. So why or why not will the Bucks win the title in your opinion? Let me know in the comments section. Go find out who the biggest chokers in the 2021 playoffs are if you missed my last upload. You're the best for sticking around. Thanks so much for your support. This was D-Flow. Have a great one, and I'll see you next video.